Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey. I know we're starting a little bit late real quick, but we have everybody in. So let's welcome to the stage Rose McIver and Jason, Jason Doring. Thanks for having us. <laughs> all right. Hey. How you all doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Sis. Hopefully the aloha spirit has hit you all here on the island. I love Hawaii. I, this is my first time here and I'm obsessed. <laughs> I really oh, am. Nice. Thank you for having me. Mahalo. Very good. Very good. So one of the things I want to do, and I'm going to kind of let both you all touch on this real quick. Oh, first, I know TJ made the announcement, but again, whenever you all are ready for a question, just step towards this mic right here and hold the line there, and we'll get right to your questions, okay? But first of all, you know, let's start off from the beginning like we did other, other, other groups real quick. Let us know each about both of you all and what got you into acting. Please. <laughs> Me first. All right. Oh, tell about the twins. Yeah, that's how it happened. Uh, it's got a bit of story. So I have uh, identical twin brothers and identical twin sisters. Wow. What are the chances? What are the chances? Does anybody in this room have two sets of twins in their immediate family? <laughs> You're really? joking. You're joking. Paternal. Okay, paternal. cool. Okay. Nice. That's good. Yeah, so. I was in uh, shock. <laughs> Yeah, so fraternal twins run in the family. That's like a gene that you can have. And identical twins, they don't quite know why it happens. But um, so we had that twice. And my uh, my sisters were the little girl on a show called Growing Pains, which was a long time ago. And uh, when they're twins, they can only work them three hours. They can't work them any overtime because they're kids. So if you have ident identical twins, you can get six hours of work between the two. <laughs> we cheat everything in Hollywood. So, um, so that's how I got in. And... Uh, my mother was in a building with an agent and she said, you have two sets of identical twins? Like, who's this guy, you know? And I tagged along and the only one still doing it. <laughs> Beat that, Rose. <laughs> See, that's why I let him go. And I was just hoping it would hop past me. No, I don't really have a very interesting story. I, my brother was scouted. My, it was also sibling, um, sibling tagging on. My brother was scouted for a commercial when he was like four. He was very, um, like incredibly articulate for a kid and very cute and uh, then he got in New Zealand there's like five people it's probably a bit like in Hawaii where you meet somebody and they know your cousin or something um, so then he was in a short film like somebody's friend said can he be in a short film and then I was about 18 months old and they were like oh while you're here let's just have this baby as well and so I was just like a baby on a hip and like nothing but um then that person made another film and I, I did a bit of that and then just kind of kept doing bits of it while I was, I was at school the whole time. I like didn't miss high school, which I'm really grateful for. Um, but it just kind of kept getting more and more part of my life. And then when I finished school, I was like, I guess this is my job. I guess this is what I'm doing. I never, I don't know, I still kind of pinch myself that, uh, that another thing comes up. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe I've jinxed myself today. <laughs> we'll see. That sounds it. good. I, um, I want to touch on a little bit of both of you all. I'll start with uh, you, Rose, and, and ask you real quick about some of your work in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, how is it working there versus here? Now, true, uh, I Zombie was, was filmed in Vancouver, so it's mm -hmm. not exactly in the States, mm -hmm. but how is it how's, uh, working in New Zealand actually? Um, well, because, as I said, it's such a um, tight-knit community in New Zealand, I feel like I know, I mean, I did a film in New Zealand last year again for the first time in ages that I'd worked at home, and a lot of the people who are now the sound designers and, you know, our cinematographers were back then, they were the, like, clapper loaders, they were the camera assistants, and they were the boom operators, and so it's, like, very close and very... Um, you, you kind of come to know each other as a family very well, whereas sometimes I find in North America there's, it's still smaller than people think. It's not crazy huge. There are very close degrees of connection, but I think it's just the whole scale feels a lot bigger. Um, the size of a production feels bigger. Mm. Um, but ultimately, like for what I do, I try to do the same work and wherever I am, and, and uh, you know, you still build a really strong relationship with whoever you work with. So kind of only as different as 
as you make it, too. Understandable. Understandable. <laughs> so, you were in a small show called Veronica Mars? Yes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Very small. <laughs> Maybe five episodes. So, uh, tell us... A little, uh, tell us a little bit about that process, working on that show, how was it for you, your character? No spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Every spoiler possible, and the, the reemergence of the show. Yeah, so uh, we started the show in 2004, uh, I believe it was, to 2007, um, and nobody really saw it. It was on a TV station called UPN, which nobody knew about. <laughs> We were very different than anything else on the show, uh, on the network. And um, CW, uh, this, this new network was formed called CW, which was, uh, the C was from CBS, who owned UPN, that's right. And then W from WB, and these two networks, which both had full schedules, had to combine into one network. So half of the shows were gonna be canceled, which was crazy, so uh, we made it, but only for a year. And so that was three seasons, and then we had a fan-funded movie, and um, people gave between a dollar and ten thousand uh, dollars to fund this movie. We had n over ninety thousand uh, contributors, and uh, the guy who gave ten thousand dollars it was one prize, and he had to, he got a line in the movie that couldn't be cut, which I thought was really classy. <laughs> Such a good um, disclaimer that do. it cannot be. Yeah, cut. because yeah. you could imagine like you could pay ten thousand dollars. That's cool. Uh, I bought that so I could have a line in the movie. <laughs> um, but it was cool, you know, for $200 you got a signed poster from the entire cast, so we signed 8,000 posters, literally, and uh, it was 23 hours of work, you know, you just, my wife would flip it and I'd sign it, flip it and sign it. And uh, we, we sort of made this movie for the fans, and then recently Hulu, uh, just about a week and a half ago, released the f what they're calling the fourth season, which is odd, but 15 years later. So cool. Yes. Yeah, it's dope. If you haven't seen it, it's really dope. Talk about um, like fan support, you know, holding on to, for a property to come back that much later is just this incredibly dedicated audience. That... Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, you know, Rose was obviously the lead of iZombie, which was Rob Thomas' show also, so... If, you know, it's uh, just... So I'm, yeah, we're going to start a Kickstarter to try to get some money together for our movie? <laughs> yeah, but just, you know, the writing in iZombie is just, and all of Rob's shows is quite uh, mm. a great thing to be a part of. Mm, for sure. So quick question for the audience. Did any of you all help pay for Veronica Mars out there? Contribute? Who contributed? Oh, oh look at that. Guys. Well done. All three of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Which one of you all got a poster? We got a poster. There we yeah. go. <laughs> nice. Thanks, guys. Nice. I really enjoyed the movie, so I appreciate you guys um, chipping in. That's yeah. really cool. That it's is so cool. cool. That is nice. But uh, we can go ahead and start touching a little bit on iZombie. Sure. <laughs> you had a great run. I believe the final episode was a few days ago, right? I'm still um, <laughs> slightly in denial, but yes, the final <laughs> episode aired on Thursday. Oh, um, man. And... Full disclosure, I haven't seen it yet, um, so don't tell me what happens. <laughs> um, but I, I tweeted along with it. I actually didn't see it because I was here. I had flown in um, on Thursday night and the time difference was just off, so I couldn't watch it while it was on. And I'm looking forward to watching it next week when I am surrounded by lots of boxes of tissues and <laughs> a hot water bottle. Um, no, it's been such a good run. It is really sad to say goodbye, but I think five years is a very good run. And I think I love that we knew the end was coming so that we got the ending that we wanted, um, that Rob wanted. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. And... It, it's never really gone because I get to come and meet awesome people who talk about it and I learn what the characters have meant to them and the story has meant to them and um, I see amazing lives out there who are trying to put me out of any future spin-offs by taking my job. <laughs> Very good. Um, no, I'm, I'm just so happy that five good years. It's good to have something to miss, right? Right. It, I'm not sure how many times you've had projects or shows you've been a part of where you've had a chance to actually see through the entire storyline for a show. So that has to feel pretty special. Mm -hmm. I'd never been on something so long running, so um, for me, just 
the depth of connection between the people you end up working with after five years is so special. The way you kind of understand each other as actors and people. You've gone through massive life events together. Mm. It really is... Um, it's, it's a special kind of project you end up working on by the end. And it's a bit like high school. It's like the end of high school and you're all going off to different colleges and um, it's this very shared experience that it, it is rare to get so long. Often it just gets pulled out from underneath you and you don't get the ending or anything. So... No, it's, it's best case scenario. I'm really doing silver linings right now, guys. <laughs> Concentrating, no clouds. <laughs> How about for you with the experience of being able to finish uh, the actual storyline for a full show? Yeah, sure. Um, our show, we did the Veronica Mars. I mean, I can't speak for that one because I ended, I, I, I died, guys. <laughs> I died. Spoiler! <laughs> mm. um, but we did our, our show for three years, and at the I think in the you might appreciate this, but in in the uh, toward the end of our third season, CW came to Rob and said, "I think this is probably going to be the last. You know, I think you should tie it up or whatever." And he did the exact opposite. He left it completely open, uh, did not resolve it, which created you know upset. Was he trying to trick them? Like I have no idea what happened. You're like, hey, you gonna you think you're gonna end it here? Watch this. And then they did. <laughs> yeah, and they went along. But uh, thank God, because you know they it left it open for sort of fans, yeah. fans to be able to continue it. So that's yeah. you know the reason that we had um, a continuation was because we didn't he get kinda, that. Right. We got well and truly tied up. So <laughs> oh, really? okay, yeah, sorry. Jealous. It is something to say about fans going. No, this is not going to stop. I'll give you the money in my pocket. Here's my top pocket change. Continue yeah. the story. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, really incredible. Like we had some people that uh, flew out, you know, like as a as a as a prize to come and have lunch with the cast, and mm. they could be in the movie. So, was anybody in the movie here? Oh my One gosh, person. Right there. there we go. <laughs> yeah, so cool. it was so awesome. So we had people in high heels for 16 hours during our party <laughs> scenes, and they were partying all night with us, and it was. Freaking awesome. Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's awesome. why she's walking on one leg. Yeah. Thank there you. you. She's Thank still you for your service. Got scars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And just a reminder, everybody, if you have a question, please step to the mic over here and we'll get right to you. So, what uh, was I zombie? Yes. For both of the question for both of you, real quick. Um, what got you to your role? Like, uh, was it a call? Were they, was it a Casting um, call or? Uh, I, it's one of those funny things. Pilot season is always so weird in LA. It's changing now, I'm sure. But there was a job that I was up for that I was so attached to. I wanted it so much. And so I had kind of stopped reading other things. And I had tested for this show and it felt like a shoe in It was all meant to be. And um, I didn't get it. And I got this call and I was so disappointed. It was really one of those ones I cared about. Ended up, that show never even got picked up to series. I got a call uh, like the day after being like, there's this thing they can't cast, can you come look at it? And I was like, what's I zombie? I don't know, what is this I zombie thing? Like, I thought I was gonna be playing this very serious lawyer and this other thing. Anyway, I was kind of just, I was, I was broken hearted about this other job. So I was sort of distracted going into it. And I think that's lucky because it made me not really think about the um, scope of what I'd be signing up for because um, and, and them as well, you know, they were desperate, so <laughs> it was a good, a good marriage there. They were really looking for somebody and they'd struggled to find her and I came in, I was the last person. They often talk, Rob, Rob Thomas talks about how when he cast Veronica Mars, Kristen Bell was the first person he auditioned and when they cast iZombie, I was the last person they auditioned. Um, but it, it just sort of sprung on me and because we didn't really know it would, the character would be changing as much as it did uh, and the, the brains would be being taken on to quite such a capacity, it was good that I didn't have time to think any of that through or over-prepare or psych myself out and just kind of flew in there and went for it. And um, it was funny because Chris Lowell, who plays Piz on Veronica Mars, is an old friend of mine. And he got a call from Rob Thomas saying, we're testing this girl Rose tomorrow, what do you know about her? And he got a call from me being like, I'm up for this Rob Thomas show. What do you know about him? <laughs> like, what does he like to work for? So Chris, Chris claims that he's the matchmaker. Um, but it, once, once it took off, it just, I don't know, like it happens so quickly. You don't actually know, you don't have the time to prep. It's not like a movie where you might get months in advance to kind of develop something. It was like I got the job and a week later I was up 
like trying to decide on the wig, trying to, you know, moves so fast, we're suddenly shooting. And so the first episode kind of was very instinctive and sort of finding things as we went. Um, and then once we had the show, once the pilot got picked up, there was a lot more time to develop things and come up with stuff. But it was a very hectic kind of origin. But um, I sort of love that. It, may, it sort of takes away some of the fear and the room for us to overanalyze and get too caught in our heads, and we just went for it. <laughs> I'm up here. Yeah, I just uh, got a call from Rob. I had died on another show. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, if you die on that show, call me. And I said, okay. And uh, I'm dead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, came to, came to work and met Rose and uh, was sort of the, the, the bad guy. And I, I had done, funnily enough, um, I heard it was a military role. I didn't know much about the mm -hmm. humor of the show. So I literally went to uh, one of the founder of Blackwater's houses, and which is a private military training company, and it was like very serious, you know what I mean? Shooting flamethrowers and stuff, and then I found out it's a comedy, you know? <laughs> anyway, but Rob had called me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's, that's hilarious. hilarious. Okay, I have a few questions. Yes. Two questions. What is your favorite blooper from iZombie? Blooper, wow, good one. My favorite blooper from iZombie uh, is <laughs> Rahul was, um, it was Raul and Malcolm and I, it was season two, episode one, when I'm on, I think it's season two, episode one, I'm on Archie Bunker Brain, it's when I'm the, like really racist, uh, kind of aggro old dude with chronic pain. Anybody know what episode that is or what season? I think it's season two, episode one. Let's commit to that. Um, anyway, it was this lovely old lady, older woman, who um, had to ride a mobility scooter in it, and they kind of had skimmed through the instructions for her a little um, about the accelerator and the brake. And she was coming towards <laughs> Malcolm and Raul and I, and there was a sandbag, like a weighted sandbag that was on the ground that was supposed to stop, you know, she was supposed to stop once she hit that on her front tire or whatever. And she hit it and thought she was braking and hit accelerator and like bounced over it and was flying towards us. And there's like a road behind me and it's honestly one of the only heroic things I've ever done in my life, so I'm gonna own it. I like jumped in front to try to like stop her getting in the road. It was going at like one mile an hour. It was not fast. <laughs> but I like slowly jumped in front and um, Malcolm was like, oh, and like quick behind me to do the same thing. And Raul like dived into a bush and like, <laughs> like hid. He actually physically like curled up away from it. And we got it all on camera and we watched that on repeat every now and then when he's getting too big for his boots. We're like, Raul, just remember this. I'm like, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I wasn't on the show a super lot, um, and not known for doing. You were that. in our eyes. Thank you. Um, Rico uh, Enrico Colantoni had directed an episode, and he's on in Veronica Mars playing Veronica's dad, and uh, he was in iZombie and directed a couple. And uh, I was being very serious on set one day, apparently, and uh, he's. Do you know about this? Hmm. Here you go. Um, he said, "He's like Jay. Jay, come here." whispers quietly, he's like, what do I want you to do in this scene? It's a very serious thing. I'm like thinking about like the, all the problems and stuff like that. And he says, I want you to hop all the way across the stage or whatever. And he didn't tell the other actors that because he said it's just going to scare the shit out of them. Like they don't know what's going to go on. And so I hopped and, and then I started doing the scene, you know. <laughs> and it wound up in the gag reel. You can see it. And, and there was no reason for it? No reason at all. <laughs> No, oh, and I, now Jason I look like a complete Dorian idiot on the gag reel, and that's the story behind it. That is amazing. I had no idea. That is, you were so dedicated. It was for, for the acting. The so, yeah, that's how you tricked me. Oh man, I can't wait to direct you in something one day. <laughs> now I know what you like. Second question is, how was it when um, Sasha came on your set? Sasha, who's here today, you mean? Who played in the Patriot Brain episode? It was so cool to run into her just now. Because it's been a few years and she's grown up, I don't, just didn't recognize her straight away. And she's like, it's me, it's Sasha. I was like, oh my goodness. She was lovely, so sweet, so nice to work with. Really excited that she's got her own show now, The Dragon Prince, correct, yeah? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, she's really nice, thanks. Good, good uh, reference there. <laughs> thanks for your question. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi. I have two questions, same. Um, first one, so what's in your guys' future? Do you have roles that you hope to, or like plan to play or anything like that that you hope to do? I would love a job. Um, <laughs> very open, very painfully open right now. Um, no, I, I, I do, I, I like working a lot and I had been really lucky with iZombie, it kept me busy for a long time and I always was filling up every hiatus with jobs and actually right now I, I went for a couple of things that I really wanted and I didn't get them and you just kind of, I'm leaning into it, I'm, I feel like I really needed to stop for a second as well and um, I'm trying to get better at that because relaxing has never been my MO um, and just like yeah, I, I think I'm often racing for the next thing and it's probably pretty good to just take a moment and enjoy what's around me and I'm doing that at the moment and hoping that the right thing will come up when it comes up and otherwise, uh, yeah, send me a script, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just did a movie with Billy Baldwin and Peter Vack from Mozart in the Jungle. It's a it's sort of a family drama, I'm crying in the whole movie. It's going to be crazy. But I don't die. <laughs> All right. Yet. Um, you haven't seen the final yeah, cut, have you? <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then I'll start a movie in about a week with Olivia Munn and Justin Thoreau as well. Cool. Nice. Thank you. He promises he'll get me a gig one of these days. Oh, but yeah. If she doesn't we'll kill see. me. <laughs> I have one last fun question. Do you guys have a favorite animal or like a favorite type of dog or something cool? Hmm. I love chimpanzees. I oh. love chimpanzees. I'm fascinated by them. Um, I think they're just like more honest versions of humans. <laughs> um, love them, that's probably my go-to. The honey bee is mine. Yeah, I'm a beekeeper, heck yeah. I'm coming around to wear a bee suit soon and apparently meet the bees. Yeah. Turns out. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the bees, you're gonna save us all. Oh yeah, um, right on. For Rose. I started watching iZombie because of, I, he was a guest, he was the guy from Merlin whose name escapes me. That oh, um, oh, you were talking about Lowell on the show. Uh -huh. No, he, was a, he became a zombie and he sacrificed himself for Rose in the first season. Oh, you He was on Merlin. Ah, oh, Bradley uh, James. Yes. Who played Lowell, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that was Lowell. Yes, there you go, yeah. Bradley James, while. very good. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like working with him? He's so good. I mean, we really broke fans' hearts when we <laughs> killed him. Yikes. Spoiler, but it's season one, so I have no sympathy. If you're not there, <laughs> hop to it, guys. You've got a few to catch up on. He's the reason I started watching iZombie. He's very, very talented. Yes. He was really lovely to work with. A consummate professional, really good time. It's really annoying. I didn't want anybody to play my boyfriend on that show in the end because, yeah, they just end up dying all the time. So, um... I was disappointed that we lost him, he was great, but he's been keeping very busy, he did that Damien, he's done all sorts, so we had to re release him back into the world like the baby bird he was. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching. Hi. Hi. Um, so a question for Rose. Um, earlier I asked you what was your favorite brain. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to know what was the most difficult brain for you to play? Because you play so many and you play them so well, you know? Until this season, I would have said it was the Archie Bunker brain because um, I didn't like, it's just not much fun to have to be an asshole, really, you know? It just didn't, it, I don't know, without being able to fully develop a character and get lost in it, I think it would be interesting to play a villain if you really got to go there. But this was just a bit of a... Um, it was less fun to play every day on set, so that wasn't very appealing to me. But our episode, our second to last episode of this final season, where I am on multiple brains and Ravi is on multiple brains, that was hard. And it was just because the time constraints are already really tight to play brains. It's like, you know, I'm researching them at night after work when I'm starting doing them the next week and it's just mo it's a really fast moving machine so to have to do more than one more than two it, it got to just not feeling like I was going to be able to do any of them justice and Diane who wrote that episode is like I, I'm obsessed with Diane Ruggiero Wright co-creator of the show she's a certifiable genius um 
but she came to me <laughs> on the phone and was like, hey, so we've got this episode and I want to do um, Zombies 11, like Ocean's 11, but like zombies and you and Ravi share 11 brains. And I was like, are you kidding? I was already <laughs> suffering adrenal fatigue and like, what am I going to do? Um, but okay, sure, what are they? And she was like, well, I know you did dancing and gymnastics and stuff, so why don't we have you be a Russian Olympic gymnast? And I was like, well, sure, if you're hiring an Olympic gymnast to do all the stunts, like, I can do a cartwheel still. I'm not, I, you're, not you're gonna be disappointed. And she was like, why not? Like, you know, it'd be fine and you can do the splits. I'm like, you don't get into the Olympics doing the splits, Diane. Um, <coughs> but all those brains, that was quite a stressful one. So I would say that uh, just wanting to do them justice, like one, one at a time always suited me better. But ultimately I watched that episode and loved it so much. I just, I love Clive Babineau so, so much. And um, throughout the end of this final season, I feel like all his storylines, where, where that went and what that swelled into, was so meaningful for me. Like I just, yeah, I watched that episode. That's the last iZombie episode I've seen, the penultimate one. Um, but I think it came together incredibly well, but it was a very hard shoot. <laughs> um, and then I have a question for Jason too. Um, how often do you hear people talk to you about Moonlight and what were your thoughts about your character in the show? Um, yeah, not too much, but <laughs> What's there Moonlight? Yeah, right? <laughs> Do you want me to get out my rap sheet of all the projects you will never have known about? <laughs> all right, all right. Um, let's see. So um, it was a, sh a short-lived show on CBS. It was a vampire show. Mm -hmm. um, and Joel Silver called after Veronica Mars and he said, Kid, I love you. I'm going to put you in this thing. I'm going to pay you twice what you're making and you don't have to audition or whatever. And you were like, yes. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, it was with Alex O'Loughlin, who's on uh, Hi, Alex. Hawaii <laughs> Five. Yep. He's a local just about. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so, um, yeah, we did it for, it was, came out, it, it was canceled uh, six months before Twilight came out, which is crazy because it probably would have gone, I probably would have still been oh, doing yeah. it. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, it was great. I was really proud of it. I thought toward the end we were getting fantastic episodes in. And uh, I got to play a 400-year-old vampire who was um, mentoring Alex's character, who's older than me in real life. So I had to have like the wisdom of you know been through several wars and like it was really cute and you know he had like naked people swimming in his pool that he'd feed on every so often and you know closing deals on the side it was really cool. Wow, Anyhow. there was so many different things at once. My brain didn't know where to let John. I was like. Yeah. Naked people in a pool, 400 years old. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a Joel Silver set, you know, so yeah. he did Matrix and stuff. So we had, like, vampires flying off the walls on wires and stuff. It was really awesome. Wow. And naked girls, as I said. <laughs> sounds really tough. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Hi, um, my question is for both Rose and Jason. Um, if Chase Graves was going to eat a brain that was not a brain tube brain, um, what brain would you want him to eat? Like, what would you like to see him on? Boy, this is a question for you, I feel. Well, no, it's no, you your chase grave, sir. <laughs> um, uh, what, what brain would you want? The Russian gymnast comes to mind. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, that was who she should have given Russian gymnast brain to. That's it. That is what I would give. Or like, um, no, I wouldn't have minded seeing you on... Um, the old lady who's doing cartwheels on the scooter? Yeah, or Wheel her. Wheelies. But don't tell her um, that we're trying to get her brain. Uh, no, I think I also would have liked you and Raul together, maybe to be on like social media influencer brain. I think that would have been pretty good. Sold. Sold. For our spin-off iPhone version of the show, which we're all talking about. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's better time. Hi, Rose. Hi. Um, I heard that you studied psychology and linguistics. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something fun or interesting that you remember when you're about psychology or linguistics? Oh my goodness, you're really sifting through the archives now. That was a few years ago and I'm a dropout. But, um, <laughs> so what I tell you is probably wrong. <laughs> um, but no, I love, I love languages. I really do. Um, I, f I wish... I spoke more. I know lots of little bits of things. I worked in Romania for a long time and learned little bits of Romanian and in New Zealand I speak like more Māori than I realise that I do, um, which actually it's so amazing being in Hawaii how much you can kind of find cultural similarities there um, and language similarities there. Um, and French I learned at school. Sign like My best friend is a sign language interpreter. My one best friend is a sign language interpreter. Oh, 
<laughs> um, so I really, really would like to learn sign language, although the New Zealand sign language is very different to the American sign language, so now I'm like, what's, you know, what should I commit to? Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, my one best friend is a sign language interpreter, the other, another is a clinical psychologist, and the third like lectures in um, paramedicine and um, emergency management. So they kind of did all the brainy like hard work. Um, and then I just thought I'd be the actor who kind of slips in and gets to pretend to be all of them all the time. Um, so I'm around it a lot and I'm, I'm fascinated by psychology and linguistics, both. Just think it's a big part of my job and what I do. Um, but no, I'm not well versed enough to feel like I can offer you too much information. Okay. Sorry, can you expand a little bit? You, you mentioned Hawaii, connection to Hawaii. Oh, I'm just loving, well, um, in New Zealand, yeah, Maori people, um, descendants, they came from Hawaiiki and we have like a lot of like a lot of the names and things that pop up in the mythology here the things that i grew up hearing about and learning about like maui um so coming here for the first time this weekend i there's a part of me that very much feel it feels like home um and i'm fascinated i want to learn more thank you yeah thank you hello my name is um this question is for rose uh Thanks. what is the most brains you ever, you ever ate just to do a scene correctly the most brains I ever ate. The grossest most brain I ate was for season one, episode 11. Man, I'm like Rain Man with these, aren't I? <laughs> season one, episode 11, I ate uh, cheerleader brain and I drank it in a milkshake. And it was like, they, the way we were shooting that particular shot, we had to show the chunks, the gelatiny chunks, ugh, uh, being spun and blended. And then I immediately take it and chug it. And it was like, I think we used almond milk or something, but it was a lot of like coconut agar agar and I would have to like chug that and wow. then, you know, it was disgusting and we had multiple takes and they wanted me to like finish the whole glass and I nearly <laughs> threw up after that one. I didn't throw up, I never throw up, threw up from brains. I spat a lot, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everybody's already had their lunch. <laughs> uh, one more question, what kind of brains did you guys eat during, for the set? I mean, is that actually real brains or is it from other types of... <laughs> Food mashing together or something. I never, like a brain. I never kiss and tell, my friend. Um, <laughs> no, never real brains. Um, I some people did did for fun, like around us. I, I remember there was one marketing thing one year where they used like um, whatever sweet breads and things. But no, I, I I don't eat. I'm pretty picky. <laughs> I don't do that. I ate just coconut egg aiga. Um, we had gelatin. We had. Um, I don't know, it kind of, they, they mix, oh, when we had them in brain tubes, you guys had yogurt, right? Yeah. I was a diva by season five and demanded that I had pureed cauliflower uh, reinserted back into the yogurt packet. Um, so yeah, that would be my vegetable intake. Um, occasionally I'd have yogurt. I really just did if I felt like it. <laughs> they all Thank handled you. it pretty well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Look how awesome this live is, everyone. <laughs> so good, so good, I'm threatened. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so kind of playing off the last question, I know we saw a lot of where you were making the, all these different meals. Mm -hmm. If you were gonna eat one, which one would you have chosen to eat? I liked the, um, there was like a spicy uh, broth. There was like a, a chili kind of broth thing that um, was so good, it had like, I think it was like a Thai recipe, and I ended up asking Juno, our chef, for the recipe afterwards. Um, it was that delicious, and I wrote the recipe down and never made it. <laughs> but I did love it. <laughs> All right, and then one more. Are you burned out of sriracha yet? Because I feel like that was a constant thing in most of the dishes. S scra of s sriracha. A like sriracha. <laughs> I think he said scratching. I was like, nah, I can keep going. <laughs> Who's up? Um, Sriracha, no, I love hot sauces, so that part was, that was very well suited to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have hot sauce on any? No, no you didn't have to. No. Are you a hot sauce guy? Not particularly, can't really take it too well. Really? No. A little lightweight over here. I like it, Chase Graves. He's got the muscles, but he can't handle the hot sauce. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> that was hilarious. All right, guys, so, you know, we're, we're touching on a little bit about People's Love or iZombie and a lot of different shows. But for you personally, what different genres of things do you enjoy? And I kind of leading this up because I saw a little thing about the authors that inspire you, which made me go, what? 
what? The authors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, what? Wally Lamb, are you talking about? Wally? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you touch on those. But we'll start with you. Like, what are things, uh, what genres, like either TV or movies, do you enjoy seeing? Yeah, man, I, I think I mostly enjoy story, and, um, you know, I feel like that can cross any any genre. Um, I think Rob Thomas, his writing is fantastic. Like, it's uh, humorful, um, dramatic, uh, emotional, changing. I like all that stuff. I always feel like like I've had that similar situation where you're up for a role, and you're like, this is it. This is the one, you know what I mean? And if you don't get it, you're like, there will never be another role like this. And then two weeks later, there's another audition, and, you know, the writing's that good. So... They just follow good writing. And the more you work on something, I feel, like the more you put your create and your ideas into it, the more you start to enjoy it. So you can take, you know, something and you read it for the first time and you're like, ah, I'm not that excited. And then you start working on it and you're like, oh man, I got ideas. You know what I mean? That's sort of what makes it enjoyable for me. Yeah. Um, I, thinking, touching on what you said, I remember um, Alan Burstyn, it was in this Lifetime movie that I was in and Alan Burstyn's this Academy Award winner and feel like she had a pick of the litter of, of projects and she just would always choose her projects based on she was like I haven't done that and that's interesting yeah. and um, you know sometimes she'll choose a project based on the director sometimes she'll choose it based on the story sometimes it'll be based on the character that she gets to play um, or, or that it's in a place that means something to her there's different reasons to fall in love with a project I think and I'm just a big believer in whatever you do sign on to to committing and to respecting that material um, because everything has an audience and it might not necessarily be exactly what you thought you were right for or that you would technically watch but that deserves you to be giving somebody the best experience they could have as an audience member um, I know I've watched things and I'm sure you know, maybe it's a light comedy and the person considers himself a very serious actor, but I hope that they would still be committed to making me enjoy what I'm watching. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it can span. I'm with you. Story and, and, and spanning heart. You know, as long as there's heart in it, it can be comedy, it could be horror, it could be anything. Like, I'm not normally a huge horror person, and then I saw Hereditary. I was like, wow. It's just, it's compelling. Um, and I'm also, yeah, I'm a big reader, so things I, I, I like, I was just thinking of authors I like, yeah, like Wally Lamb is this particular author who I really, really love. Um, I like the topics that he thinks about. Um, I, I'm invested in what he's sharing. I like his voice. I think a lot of the time it's about do you like the voice of the person who, their, their sort of perspective on the world because uh, that comes through particularly when you're reading but also when you're watching things it's like I Zombie, which is this light fun comedy is also making comments about immigration and it's making comments about um, marginalization and othering and uh, all sorts of feminism it's got comments about all sorts of things that you can kind of take what you want from it but there's layers and that's sort of I like projects that do that, that have something, it's like a good children's book mm. is great for an adult to read um, because there's something going on there that, that you can tap into as well. Um, yeah, layers, I like layers. <laughs> fair, fair enough, real quick. So with iZombie, back to that real quick, because we talked about how fun aspects, funny aspects of the show, is there any scene or episode that you all, that really just, you just love, you're like, this is great. The Dungeons and Dragons brain was one of my favorites. Thanks. <laughs> Who are D&Ders out here? Oh, cool. You guys could have schooled me. I had a lot to learn. Um, but I loved that episode because there's something which I can imagine happens where you step back and it's storytelling. I mean, that's the game is storytelling. And, and you feel like a child again in um, getting lost in these ideas and these... It's, it's like a, just a youthful... Imaginary, like, it requires so much imagination. And something about just that context, when all of us were on set doing this campaign in Ravi and um, Major's apartment, or oh, house, that's right, they were in a house, I got the apartment, they got the house. Um, in their house, it was just, we laughed so much. We were trying to one-up each other. We were like a bunch of children at a talent quest, like just trying to push it further and further and further. We got reined in so many times that day. They were like, okay, that's not usable. Like just, just pitch it down. Like Robert Buckley's voice got so high at one point. Like, it's just not, it's not usable. Um, it will like 
drive viewers and listeners insane. So we kind of just had fun, and and that those are the moments that I just really, really loved on our show is when, and, and I think it translates. You see, when you watch that episode, how much we're all enjoying being there and with each other. Um, and it is just such a privilege in my job that I get to do that and, and get to get to have fun at work because I know that's not everybody all the time. So um, I'm very, very appreciative. <laughs> no, I understand. How about for you? Um, I mean, I was always in the dark episodes, so I didn't have any much joy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as far as yeah, I you'd goes. gone and trained with special ops, hadn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. They wrote some cool storylines. Um, and I thought it was just interesting, like, to take a character that's, like, I don't know, seemingly sort of one-sided mm -hmm. and sort of add, like, you know, a care about uh, his people and the world and stuff like that, which is something I just tried to add to him to, like, feel the weight of both sides of it and sort of the pain with having to make those decisions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It kind of added more of a richness to the character. So it had to be fun to have a character that, that had some depth to it. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. And I, I started off very one-sided, and then there were certain things that would hit me uh, in doing the role, like, that you're like, man, dude, that would be really heavy to have to make that decision, you know, and it's up to you to kind of, the human race and the zombie race is kind of up to you, and you're struggling with, like, the, I don't know, the two poles of, from both sides and trying to manage that, and it's overwhelming and stuff like that, even to a military person. And you kept it so grounded, and I think that's really much harder than it looks and a, a show like ours which can lean, lean into being quite stylized and fun and poppy and um, it, it takes an actor of a certain caliber to be able to keep that integrity and and it's it's the reason that you know you stay invested I was constantly trying to ride that line of keep the heart keep the um, stakes high and real right. and then have fun but like but the, it's the the keeping the stakes high and real and being invested is so important and yeah. it was like such a huge part of our show was having you really anchor some of those um, massive decisions that I think it's very easy when you're not in those shoes to think making a decision like that oh of course it's this of course it's that when that responsibility and pressure is on your shoulders it's a very different game I'm sure um, yeah yeah totally and I think the more you care about it as an actor the more it shows to, to yeah. an audience you know yeah that's very understandable. And then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. Tough business, man. Tough, man. <laughs> no, that is hilarious. And just a reminder, if anyone has a question, just up to the mic and we'll be fine. But when you're looking at some of the characters that you've done, like with Veronica Mars and your other shows and the 8,000 times you've died in a show, which tends to happen weekly, um, <laughs> What do you appreciate most about the craft, about doing what you do, acting? Like, what's the biggest take back do you both get from being, from doing this? You can go this time. <laughs> you go. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Um, I, I feel like Liv is a, an exaggerated kind of version of what we all are, where we all tap into different versions of ourselves. Um, like, we're all very multi-layered. I know I'm a different person with my mum and dad to who I am with an old school friend, to who I am with a new colleague, to who I am with the teller at the bank. Like, we have different people in ourselves and it was a really um, kind of concentrated role where I was able to channel this part of me and channel this part of me. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, what I was trying to do when I was keeping, in my mind, keeping Liv anchored was that... I feel like that's all of us and that we all have these different colors and shades and I get to do that in other ways in every role. Um, you know, I, I think that going forward when people keep saying like, you'll never have a role like this and I won't and I know I won't and it's been so magical but it's also taught me a lot about how much you can stretch within one person um, and how many facets you can have and so hopefully even if I'm playing somebody that might seem a bit more... Um, consistent than Liv, there are lots of nuances to other parts of her. And um, yeah, I think that's the stuff that I love is waking up, what is that surprising part of that person that you didn't expect? The heroine who suddenly realizes deeply jealous or um, the villain who really cares about the well-being of this little baby bird they've collected, whatever it is, it's like just find the thing that isn't the obvious thread. I love 
Um, I think we're all such contradictions and I love doing that and, and, and live was like a really heightened version of that where I got to lean in but I do hope to do that going forward and that's part of why I love what I do. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for me as well. Um, I think, you know, the, you know you, 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 when you're reading a book and you, you think of your ideas of what that person sounds like, it's very clear to you and, you really, and at the same time you've just created it, you know? And I think that for acting, like if you, you all hundred actors get the same pages and whatever, what makes you different is what you do with the material and your ideas and I think that's what makes it special to you and lights you on fire. I think you're reading it, reading it, and then you're like, there comes a point when you get a click of an idea and you're like, ooh, I can't wait to show this. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to get in the room and, and mm. show them this. And I think that's when it gets really exciting and you know, you give your, give your, dis your choices away like gifts to people, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And that's what I, um, I think good auditioning is too, is having committed to some very real, interesting version of it that makes sense to you. It doesn't have to be what, yeah. the, what made sense to the writer. And I just made like a little short film. And when I was casting it, when people were coming in, and it was I'd written it, read it, hearing people bring it <laughs> to life in such different ways. And sometimes I'd be like, but no, of course it's this. If you let go of that attachment and you imagine what if it's something else. Yeah. Um, and you know, as a director, you're responsible for keeping the spine of the story and the themes and the message there. But letting your collaborators really breathe this different life into something that you didn't expect yeah. is one of the coolest things you can do. It's a good reminder as an actor of how rewarding that will feel for a creative on the other end to be like, oh my gosh, I thought this character was incredibly shy and couldn't speak in front of people. And suddenly there's this ownership that the dialogue doesn't suggest, but their performance does. That stuff is like, that's the fun. That's where we're, um, yeah, I go into overdrive of like, what right. happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, one of the best comments I ever got as an actor a writer said we never know what you're going to do mm. we give you the script and we don't know what we're going to get back and I was mm -hmm. like sweet mm. it's really I impressive love that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. a few more questions I have one for each of you or actually a comment Jason I watched the vampire show with Alex I can't pronounce it Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. oh yeah um, loved the show thank you absolutely love the show because I was t I, I'm still into the vampire genre Oh yeah, um, nice. Anne Rice, not moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> They're real vampires. Uh, really loved it, but if that show had been successful, he wouldn't have been able to come to Hawaii, and we wouldn't have Hawaii Five O the way we have it today. Yes, you're welcome. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't cost you anything, Jason. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, and Rose, are you going to be um, doing anything in the Melbourne Fringe Festival this year? No, I, I, in Melbourne Fringe Festival? No, I have a film in the Melbourne Film Festival oh. right now um, called Daffodils. It's a musical. And no, I live in Los Angeles. I wish I was spending a little bit more time down under. My family are all from New Zealand. My boyfriend's family are in Australia. We would love to spend more time there, but we, at the moment we don't. But to speak to what you just said to Jason about... Um, you know, had that thing not, not happened, you guys wouldn't have gotten the show that you have now and the, the industry boom that I'm sure happened with that. I feel like that about everything. There's no, there's bad news, don't get me wrong. There is bad news, but there's also, in any of those challenges, particularly, I mean, professionally, we can get so disappointed by things sometimes and you really don't know what works out um, and, and what it's made you available for or the person that you met that you were able to fall in love with because you didn't take a job that made you live so-and-so for six months. There's just stuff to it all and I think we get very attached and um, hence why I'm being very chill about not having a job right now. I'm like, the right thing, I think sometimes if you're, if you're trying to do good work and you're being mindful and disciplined about something that you want to do, stuff finds you too and, um, and you can find the good in whatever the new job is that does pop up. Uh, or the new career, or the new whatever. <laughs> Serendipity is my middle name. Is it really? Literally? Not my real middle name. <laughs> Should be. But that's the way my life has been. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that too. Thank you. <laughs> so I have two questions uh, for both of you. Well, the first one is for both of you. Um, what is your favorite superhero or supervillain? And if there is a character that you'd like to play? in the future? So hard. Hmm. Um, man. 
They can't die. What? <laughs> they can't die. They can't, die. <laughs> can't die? Yeah, yeah, the guy, the actor who can't die. <laughs> um, no matter what. Yeah, boy. Um, gosh, I feel like any any power could be used for like such a good good cause. Um, I think it'd be a bit selfish for me to just like pick one that I would like to play. I'd like to fly. Anybody you know? got any suggestions? Yeah, what's something you'd like to see Jason Doring play? Superhero. Batman. 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 <laughs> All right. That's really being about to be shot again. You know, you could elbow somebody else out of a job. Yeah. No, there was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I might play something like that soon. We'll see. Yeah. What was, what was your suggestion? The Flash. The Flash. Yeah. Again, Grant might be a little upset. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll talk to him. What could I play? I don't know. I I, I felt like Liv was kind of a superhero in my mind. Um, um, any ideas? Exactly. Maybe I'm not meant to be one. <laughs> um, hmm. Squirrel girl. <laughs> Who's well? Thanks. <laughs> Who's squirrel girl? Cool. I am quite squirrely. <laughs> I love almonds, macadamias, and cashews. I think. I, yeah, I will. I'll ask my agent. <laughs> What was your other question? The second question is for Jason, and it's also for a friend. Will you be selling your honey? My hoodie? Honey. Your, your honey. honey. My honey. honey. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, we harvested about like three gallons of honey recently or whatever, and uh, I gave it to my, my kids, and I, I gave them like a little Venmo account, and they sell the honey to their friends at school oh, and stuff really? like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Because cool. I always sort of wanted that to learn that myself when I was a kid like I mean this is the only job I've ever had is being an actor so I haven't really learned about commerce and like making a good product and high quality are they allowed to sell it at school or are you uh... I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty I sure the that the one boy who used me. to there's a boy who used to buy cheap like chocolate bars and candy at our school and bring it to school in his backpack and sell it for like a marked up price oh really school. And I'm pretty sure he got expelled. Really? So. Yikes. Just saying, Jason. Well, it's Father organic. Of the I don't know if that helps. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, if she's in L.A., we'll make it happen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So this is for either one of you. Is there any role that you've turned down that you regret, like, seeing the popularity of it blow up? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. There's stuff back in New Zealand sometimes um, that just because I'm not there and I was trying to live in one place and for my relationship it wouldn't have been necessarily wise to take a job that kept me there for as long as some of the jobs were. Things like that sometimes I watch and I a little like I shed a tear thinking oh I wish I'd done that but also there's there's a lot out there and there are a lot of people who want jobs out there and I'm it's like some people get really competitive with their friends, like this, you know, the whole idea of these actresses all fighting over this job. To me, I'm like, if any, any good person out there gets a gig, I know how hard it can be. I've been completely unemployed for years before, and it's just like, great, somebody else got a job somewhere, this is good. That's, that's the focus, really. I think it's what it should be. Uh, and I do believe, like, you know, be kind to, to everybody out there who's trying, and you just trust that something will find you. That's, again, that sort of my sentiment about it. So no, I don't have like deep regrets. I'm not a big believer in regret. I think it's kind of useless. Um, but there are parts that sometimes I think, oh, that would have been lovely. Yeah, not, not in particular. I, there was one time when I was a kid and I got three different jobs and I had to pick one and I'm, one of them turned out God, a little bit. it must bit. be so hard, right? Three at once. <laughs> Film, just shot one. Another one coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so, um, but it, it turned out that that one wasn't much bigger or whatever than the other, so I don't have a good answer for that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I also wouldn't turn anything down right now. <laughs> Hi, um, my question is for Jason. Um, earlier, we were, um, it was discussed about Veronica Mars and it coming back, as well as um, Moonlight. So, do you think you, you would ever want to do like a Moonlight wrap-up movie or like a, if like the, everyone else was available to do it as well? 
Yeah, sure. I don't remember I had ever heard that Moonlight Moby had a, had a second life or not. Uh, and I'm the king of second life shows. So, <laughs> But if it, uh, if it did, that'd be awesome. I think Alex is busy on the surfboard riding around here somewhere. <laughs> uh, but um, it was such a good show and I, I think, yeah, it was awesome. And uh, I feel like if Veronica Mars is successful, I think that show will continue as well. Um, I think over the next two to three weeks, you'll We'll probably see like how the numbers did for Hulu and if it makes sense and if they would like to continue that 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 will probably come down to that kind of factor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Last question. Hey, um, <clears throat> since you do an American accent in the show, do you ever get stuck? Uh, like after work, are you still in the accent? <laughs> No, I have a weird brain like that. It just, it really drops in and out. Some people I know who do an accent for a project keep, keep it all day to kind of make sure they don't slip. My brain just, it's really in and out. It'll be, if I'm in a scene, and like when, say, I Zombie, we're shooting I Zombie, and halfway through the scene, the director calls out a note, I'll talk back to the director in English. English? English? <laughs> yeah. In a New Zealand accent, English both times, um, but <laughs> in a New Zealand accent, and then drop back into an American when I'm playing her. I don't know, I just, it's, t it's personal. And for me, that always worked easier. I also was basically living on set for most of the time and I wouldn't have felt like I could ever be myself, I think, if, if I couldn't drop in and out. The one really tough, the only time I've, I mean, sometimes you bungle words more. It's like if I'm doing improv, I'll say a phrase that doesn't make any sense in America. And it'll be in an American accent, but it'll be like, how are you doing? Oh no, how are you going? Is what I say sometimes, and people are like, that's not a thing. <laughs> They're like, that's, so how are you going? Or it'll be like an idiom that traps me more than an accent oh, thing. Okay. Um, but the one phrase that was really hard was a film that some of you may know. I think I spoke to a couple people today who'd seen it. Johnny Kapahala, Back on Board. It's like a Disney Channel film that I did when I was 18 or something. And I play a girl from Hawaii, um, and we filmed in the beautiful Hawaiian beach of Piha, New Zealand. Um, <laughs> and so it was like 10 minutes down the street from where I grew up. So they're big black sand beaches in New Zealand too, so um, I guess it was doubling for somewhere here. And in that show, I'm a dirt boarder. Turns out a dirt boarding girlfriend is like the hardest phrase. Dirt boarding girlfriend. I was like, Dirt boarding girlfriend, dirt, dirt boarding girl, it just was really, that one. I've got it now, but dirt boarding girlfriend was a really hard American accent thing. So if you've got any people who are trying to do them, like any non-American accent natives, um, test them with that phrase, dirt boarding girlfriend. If they can't do that, they can't do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. You all will be downstairs, mm, right? Yeah. All right. So if you all would like to speak with them a little bit longer about how to phrase, mm. that would be great. All right. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you guys so, so much for having us. Really love being here. Good questions. Mahalo.